All right, all of your playground pieces should be created. We're going to work on creating assemblies now. Uh, we're going to start off by making several sub-assemblies um, towards the creation of our final product, which is going to be the playground. So the first sub-assembly that we're going to make, be making is the monkey bar sub-assembly. The directions are on your Google Classroom. Uh, so if you ever get lost or need further uh, assistance, make sure to refer to the documentation that is in the Google Classroom. So problem 1.5.98, the playground design problem teacher support document, uh, details and delineates all the steps that are necessary to make the playground. So the first thing that we're going to do, question or not question one, but rather step one is open a new assembly file. So we'll go, we'll go to event, Inventor, make sure that we're in the right project path, and we are. And we're going to create a new assembly. So templates, English, standard.iam, that standard.iam, that extension stands for standard inventor assembly. So from the ribbon, we're going to go to place. In case it doesn't say place on, uh, on your uh, computer, make sure you click the drop down arrow and choose place. That'll open up the place component dialog box. And the first thing that we're going to do is according to our documentation is we want to place a monkey bar file. So we're going to find the monkey bar. So there's one monkey bar, two monkey bars. Click OK. And this monkey bar here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the appearance. Uh, from an, Earlier on when I was making this, I created a uh, monkey bar that we uh, turned into a wood piece. Actually, I want to uncheck grounded. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just going through the process of uh, changing the uh, appearance back to the default uh, gray color. So this is something that you won't have to do. This will already, already be done on your uh, computer. All right. So I have two monkey bars. Why didn't that one change? Let's try that again. Appearance. Default. All right. All right, so this piece right here, this is indicated by a monkey bar one right here in the browser. I'm going to right click on monkey bar one in the browser and I'm going to choose grounded. So I'm going to make this my pin piece. This is going to serve as the anchor for all the other pieces that we uh, uh, bring in. So I'm going to uh, uh, not worry right now about monkey bar two, but now I'm going to bring in two upright monkey bars into the assembly. So I'm going to go to place and I want to bring in upright monkey bar. One, two. So I've got two upright side monkey bars. Now, one of the things you will have to do is put these in the correct orientation. Right now, these are not in the correct orientation. So according to my documentation, if I zoom in here, I can see that I've got seven holes here. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six holes towards the bottom half of the pole, which means I need to flip this one upside down. So the first thing that we need to do in order to constrain this is we need to rotate this outside upright monkey bar in the correct orientation. So I'm going to flip it upside down, then rotate it over so that the holes are facing the front of the object. And that's good enough. I just want to make sure that these holes here are facing uh, the front of uh, my home cube or the front of the uh, monkey bar so they're in the same plane. Now I'm going to apply some glue or mate the bottom of this to the bottom, I'm sorry, the top of this monkey bar to the bottom of this uh, monkey bar. So I'm going to go to constrain. It defaults to mate. I'm going to place a mate constraint on the top of the outside monkey bar. Go to my orbit in the navigation panel. Rotate up. Right click OK. Choose the bottom of the monkey bar. Click apply. Go home. And now I'm going to apply another constraint, which is a flush constraint. So I'm going to go to flush. And remember, what flushing does, it allows two uh, faces to face the same plane. So I both want the front face of the monkey bar to be facing the same direction uh, of the upside uh, upright monkey bar facing the same direction as my monkey bar. So again, I'm going to go to flush, click the front of the outside upright monkey bar, Place another flush constraint on the monkey bar. Click Apply. 
Now I've got one degree of freedom left. I've placed two constraints. I have a make constraint and a flush constraint. If I want to look at those constraints, I can uh, expand the part in the browser and it'll highlight if I hover over either one of the constraints. And remember, constraints are limitations. Those are things that, that tell how we want our pieces to behave inside the real world because inside uh, the computer, the world of physics and gravity, those things do, do not exist inside the computer. So we have to tell Inventor how we want our pieces to interact like they would as if, this in the, if this were the real world. So I've got one degree of freedom left, and that is along this, uh, uh, along here on the x-axis. So I've got one more constraint to put in. What, am I, what constraint am I going to use, a flush or a mate? Correct, I'm going to use a flush constraint. So I'm going to go to constraint. I'm going to choose the orbit tool from the navigation panel. I'm going to rotate the whole assembly out to my right. Right click OK to cancel out the, the orbit tool. Click flush. Click the back of the outside upright monkey bar, the back or the end of the monkey bar. Click apply. Close the place constraint dialog box. Go home. Okay? This is now fully constrained. I need to do exactly the same thing with this piece here. I've got one more piece. Remember, these pieces are not constrained, so they float and they can drag. So the first thing I'm going to do with the outside upper, upright monkey bar is put it in position using the free rotate tool. So I'm just going to rotate this up so I'm looking at the holes are facing the front. And then I can pick on the top. Okay, that's good. Right click OK to cancel out the ro rotate tool. Constrain. I want to place a make constraint on the top of the outside upright monkey bar. I need to rotate the whole assembly. Right click OK. Click the bottom of the monkey bar. Click apply. Close the dialog box. Go home. Okay. Now if you notice, what I'm, it's not quite facing the front, but that's okay. Remember the computer, we can do a whole bunch of stuff that we can do uh, inside a computer that we wouldn't be able to do in the real world. So now I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to rotate the whole assembly around so I can pick that side. So I'm going to click Constrain. Now I'm going to use a flush constraint. I'm going to click the front of the outside upright monkey bar, the front of the monkey bar, now they're facing the same way. They're facing the same plane. Again, I've got one degree of freedom left. And now I'm going to rotate the whole assembly around again. Right click OK. Click Constrain. Flush. Click the back side of the outside upright monkey bar against the end of the monkey bar here. Click Apply. They're now fully constrained. Even though this one moves as a unit, that's okay. We'll come back to that later. Let's go back and look at our directions. The directions say now we need to place two upright monkey bar ladders, or two monkey bar ladders, into the assembly. So I'm going to go to place. I'm going to bring in two monkey bar ladders. One, two. Again, let me change the appearance. You, this is, again, something you won't have to do, but I have to do because I changed that. Okay, now I'm going to rotate these into position. It's the same process that we use for doing the, up, uh, uh, the upright monkey bar. So go to constrain, actually go to free rotate, click on the component I want to rotate. I want to make sure the holes are facing the front. Constrain, make constraint on the end of the monkey bar ladder, rotate, zoom in, click the bottom of the monkey bar, click apply, click flush, click the, uh, the right side of the monkey bar ladder, monkey bar, flush. This is now constrained. Oop, it's not constrained. I got one more flush to put in. My bad. Constrain, click the front of, actually let me go home when I do this. Click the front of the monkey bar ladder, the front of the monkey bar. This is now fully constrained. I'll need to do exactly the same thing here. Go to constrain. I'm going to click the f this side of the monkey bar. Rotate the whole assembly.
rotate the whole assembly, click OK here, click Apply, go home. Constrain, click Flush, click the front of the monkey bar, Apply, click Flush, click the right side of the monkey bar, ladder with a monkey bar, click Apply. Okay, now I can still move this around, that's fine. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring in a monkey pole, okay? We're gonna uh, bring in one monkey pole, and what we're gonna do is that's gonna allow us to constrain these two pieces together. So I'm gonna go to place, I'm gonna bring in a monkey pole. Again, let me change the, the color back to the natural default. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a mate constraint. We're not going to use the insert constraint here. We're going to use the mate constraint. So I'm going to go to constraint. I'm going to click the center line of the monkey pole, the center line of the monkey of the monk of the hole on the monkey pole here. Click apply. I'm going to flush the end of the monkey pole with the end of the upright monkey bar. Click apply. So that's one pole in. This pole is now fully constrained. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this pole in this hole here. Constrain. I'm going to select the center line of the monkey pole. Zoom in. Line up the center hole. Click apply. Okay. Now it's on the pole. I've got one more constraint I need to put in. So I'm going to rotate the whole assembly to my right. Let me zoom out. Click Constrain. What constraint am I going to use in order to make sure that this is on the same, that this uh, planar surface is on the same plane as the monkey pole? Mate or flush? Correct. Flush. Flush. I'm going to select the end, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the back side of the outside upright monkey bar with the end of the monkey pole, click apply. I'm going to go home. Okay, I've got one problem. This still rotates. So what constraint am I going to use? So I'm, I've constrained this to the point now where it's constrained to the pole, but it still rotates along the axis on the pole. I obviously don't want that to behave like that in the real life because that would present a safety hazard to children everywhere, so we don't want that to happen. How are we going to prevent this from rotating? Okay, what constraint are we going to use to prevent that? Okay, am I going to use a mate constraint? No, because remember mates like glue, so we don't want to glue the pieces together. We want two planar surfaces on the same plane, so what do we want to use? Flush, that's correct. I'm going to click the top of the monkey bar with the top of this monkey bar. Click apply. This is now grounded. Everything is now, not grounded rather, um, Everything is fully constrained. The only thing left to do now is put in the poles. So now I can bring in another monkey pole. And this one I'm going to put on the top. Again, let me right click. Highlight that from appearance. Turn this back to default. Click constrain. Zoom in. Click the center line of the monkey pole. Click the center line of the hole. Click Apply, click Flush, flush the end of the monkey pole with the end of the monkey bar. And that is the process for putting in all the poles. That same process just has to be repeated until you have all the monkey poles inserted into each of the holes. It's the same process. Constrain, pick the center line. Find the central line of the hole, click apply, flush the end of the monkey pole with the flush end of the, uh, actually this would be the, the front of the monkey bar, and repeat that, repeat that process for each of the holes, and then your monkey bar uh, subassembly.